Chris here from Project Option and in today's options trading strategies video we're going to talk about the long iron condor or buying an iron condor. So a long iron condor is a market neutral strategy that consists of purchasing an out of the money call spread and an out of the money put spread and the strategy profits when the stock price moves beyond one of those spreads. So let's go ahead and talk about the basic strategy characteristics. All right, so a long iron condor or buying an iron condor is an option strategy that consists of buying an out of the money call spread and an out of the money put spread in the same expiration cycle. Now the strategy is similar to a long strangle, but it has lower loss potential and less profit potential. Now the maximum profit potential of a long iron condor position is the width of the wider spread that you purchase minus the debit paid times 100. So we'll go through an example of that shortly. Now the maximum loss potential is the debit paid times 100, which basically means that if you buy an iron condor for $2.50, your maximum loss potential is $250 per iron condor. Now the expiration break-even prices of a long iron condor are the long call strike price plus the debit paid and the long put strike price minus the debit paid. So that debit that you pay extends your break-even points beyond the long call and put strike, so you actually need the stock price to move beyond those strikes by the debit that you pay. Now the estimated probability of profit for this strategy is less than 50%, and that's because you need a large stock price movement or increase in implied volatility in order to turn a profit. Now the resulting position after expiration depends on if one of the spreads is entirely in the money or if only a long option is in the money. So if either spread is entirely in the money, then no stock position is taken after expiration. However, if only a long option is in the money, the position will settle to plus 100 shares of stock if the long call is in the money and negative 100 shares of stock if only the long put is in the money. So if one of those long options is in the money at expiration and you do not want a stock position, you'll have to close that option before it expires. Now in regards to assignment risk, the long iron condor strategy does have a short call and short put component. So if the short call is in the money before expiration, the assignment risk is negative 100 shares per contract. And if the short put is in the money before expiration, the assignment risk is plus 100 shares per contract. So right when your short option becomes in the money, you probably don't have to worry about early assignment unless that short option has very little extrinsic value because when someone exercises a long option, they forfeit the extrinsic value that is in that option. So if an option has a lot of extrinsic value, then the trader who owns that option is not likely to exercise it. So when you have a short option that's in the money, you really don't have to worry about assignment risk until that option has very little extrinsic value, which happens near expiration or if the option is really, really deep in the money. However, with that said, anything can happen, so just keep that in mind. All right, now that we've gotten the general strategy characteristics out of the way, let's go ahead and look at a hypothetical long iron condor trade from the following option chain. So at the time of these option prices, let's say the stock price is right around $500, and let's say we think the stock price is going to make a large movement either up or down. And to play that, we're going to buy an iron condor. So to do this, we're going to buy the 450 put and the 550 call, and then we're going to sell the 400 put and the 600 call. So in other words, we're going to buy the 450 400 put spread and buy the 550 600 call spread. Now we're going to pay a net debit for this trade of $11.38. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at the expiration risk profile graph for this position. All right, so in this example, the initial stock price is $500, and that's right in between our long put and long call strike price of $450 and $550, respectively. So as we can see here, if the stock price is in between the long put and long call at expiration, we're going to lose the maximum loss potential. So that's going to be the debit paid of $11.38 times 100, which is $1,138. Now, the maximum profit potential is realized if either the put spread or call spread is entirely in the money at expiration. Now, that means the stock price has to be below 400 or above 600 at expiration. Now, that maximum profit potential of $3,862 comes from the fact that we have a $50 wide put spread and a $50 wide call spread, and we paid $11.38 for this entire package. So if either the put spread or long call spread is entirely in the money at expiration, then this position is going to be worth $50. And since we paid $11.38 for it, that would represent a profit of $3,862. 
So as we can see here, our break-even prices are 438.62 and 561.38. And that comes from the long put strike price minus the debit paid and the long call strike price plus the debit paid. So in other words, if the stock price is at one of those break even points, then one of those long options is worth the amount we paid for the iron condor, in which case we break even on the trade. So before getting into the specific trade examples, let's briefly discuss a long iron condor's Greek exposures when the stock price is between the long strikes. Now initially, most of the time, a, the delta of a long iron condor will be near zero because if you buy a put spread and call spread with offsetting deltas, you'll have no delta exposure or no directional exposure initially. However, you can structure an iron condor directionally if the call spread and put spread do not have equally offsetting deltas. So if your put spread delta is larger than your call spread delta, then you'll have a net bearish bias. And if your call spread delta is larger than your put spread delta, then you'll have a net bullish bias. So a long iron condor has positive gamma. And that means when the stock price increases, a long iron condor becomes more long because its position delta gets more positive. And when the stock price falls, a long iron condor position becomes more short because its delta becomes more negative. Now that means as the stock price starts moving in one direction, you want that move to continue because if that, cont if that move continues, then you'll make money from your positive or negative deltas. Now, the theta of a long iron condor is negative, and that means if the stock price is in between your long strikes and all that happens is time passing, then you're going to lose money on this trade because as time passes, the extrinsic value of options decays over time, and that leads to lower option prices. Now, since you bought the iron condor, you want the option prices to increase, and therefore, as time passes, the decay of the options is not good for you. And lastly, the position vega of a long iron condor is positive, and that means an increase in applied volatility is beneficial to you, and a decrease in applied volatility is harmful. Now that's because an increase in implied volatility indicates an increase in option prices, which is obviously great for you as an iron condor buyer. And lastly, if a decrease in implied volatility occurs, that's an indication that option prices are decreasing, which is not what you want since you are net long options. All right, now let's get into the example trades. So the first one we'll look at is a partial loss on a long iron condor. So here's the setup. The initial stock price is 202.31, and to set up our long iron condor, we're gonna buy the 196.182 put spread, and we're gonna buy the 208.215 call spread, with all of those options expiring in 72 days. Now we're gonna pay a net debit of $4.43 for this, which brings our upper break even price to 212.43, and our lower break-even price to 191.57. Now our maximum profit potential on the upside is $257, while our maximum profit potential on the downside is $957. Now that's because we have a $7 wide call spread and a $14 wide put spread. So remember that our maximum profit potential is the width of the wider spread, so in this case that's the $14 wide put spread, minus the debit paid, times 100, which is $957 if that put spread is fully in the money at expiration. Now our maximum loss potential is the net debit paid of $4.43 times 100, which is $443. So let's go ahead and see what happens with this trade. All right, so in the top part of this graph, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to our iron condor strike prices and break even prices. So in the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the actual changes in the iron condor's price as the stock price moves through time. So as we can see here, the stock price starts right around 202.31 and remains between the long strikes for the first 30 days or so. Now as we can see, the long iron condor's value decreases over that period and that means we have losses. Now at the highest point, the stock price rises to 212.43, which is just at our upper break even point. And as we can see at that point, the iron condor is pretty much at a break even. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the stock price does end up falling from there and is just above our long call strike at expiration, but lower than our upper break even price. Now, since the stock price is not above or beyond one of those break even prices at expiration, that means we have a losing trade. So in this example, the iron condor's final value was right around $2, and since we bought it for $4.43, that means we lost about $2.43 per iron condor. So that loss would equate to about $243.
So this is a good example of how if you buy an iron condor and the stock price does not make a significant move to the upside or downside, you're likely to lose money from the time decay of the options in the iron condor. So in this case, it was not a full loss as the long call did expire in the money, but unfortunately the stock price was not beyond one of the break-even prices, so it was a losing trade overall. Now the last thing I'll point out is that the 208 long call expired in the money, which means that if this trade was held through expiration, then it would have settled to a value of plus 100 shares of stock per long call contract. So if you did not want a stock position after expiration, you would have had to sell that 208 call before it expired. All right, so example trade number two. We're gonna look at a maximally profitable iron condor. So here's the setup. The initial stock price is 121.45, and for our iron condor setup, we're gonna buy the 119.115 put spread, and we're gonna buy the 124.128 call spread. Now all the options expire in 46 days. Now for this trade, we're going to pay a net debit of $1.53, which brings our upper break-even price to $125.53 and our lower break-even price to $117.47. Now our maximum profit potential is the same on both sides in this case because our call spread and put spread are both $4 wide. So our maximum profit potential in this trade is $247, which comes from the $4 wide spreads minus $1.53. That's what we paid for the trade and multiply that by 100, which comes out to $247. Now our maximum loss potential is the net debit paid of $1.53 times 100, which is $153. So with all of this said, let's go ahead and see what happens to this position. All right, so in the top part of the graph, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to our iron condor strike prices and break even prices. And in the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the price of the iron condor as the stock price is moving. So clearly in the top part of the graph we can see that the stock price starts around 121.45 and it rises steadily through our long call spread and expires at around $131, which means the 124-128 call spread is entirely in the money at expiration and therefore the final value of the iron condor is $4. Now that's because that long 124-128 call spread is worth $4 and that long 119, 115 put spread expires worthless. So all in all, the iron condor is worth $4. Now since we paid $1.53 for the entire package, that means we realized the maximum profit potential of $2.47 per iron condor, which comes out to $247 in actual dollar terms. So this example just shows that if you buy an iron condor and the stock price is completely beyond one of your long spreads at expiration, you will realize a profit on the iron condor. So in this case, the maximum profit is capped because with a $4 wide put spread and call spread, the most this iron condor can be worth at expiration is $4. And we can clearly see that in the bottom part of this graph. All right, example trade number three, we're gonna look at a max loss iron condor. And as we know, that happens when the stock price is in between the long strikes at expiration. So here's the setup. The initial stock price is 574.81, and to set up our long iron condor, we're going to buy the 535.505 put spread, and we're also going to buy the 615.645 call spread. So all of those options expire in 46 days. Now for this trade, we're going to pay a net debit of $11.65, which brings our upper break-even price to 626.65, and our lower break-even price to 523.35. Now in this case, both of our spreads are 30 points wide, and that brings our maximum profit potential to $1,835. So that's the $30 wide spreads minus the debit paid times 100, which comes out to $1,835. So our maximum loss potential in this case is our debit paid of $1,165 times 100, which is $1,165 per long iron condor. So let's go ahead and see what happens to this trade. All right, so again, in the top part of this graph, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to our long iron condor strike prices and the break-even prices. And in the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the changes in the long iron condor's price. So as we can see here, the stock price started around $575 and immediately collapsed completely through our long put spread. Now, as that happened, we can see that the long iron condor's price rose from $11.65 to above $20. 
So that's almost a 100% increase in the iron condor's price. Now let's say you actually wanted to lock in your profits when that move happened. You could actually go ahead and sell the iron condor for the current price and lock in whatever the profits were at that time. So let's say you bought the iron condor for around $12 and you sold it for $20. In that case, you would pocket an $8 profit per iron condor, which comes out to an $800 profit in dollar terms. Now I'm not at all saying that you would have known that that would be the highest profit potential in that trade, but it does help to know that if you have a profit or loss on the table and you want to get rid of the position, you can always exit before expiration. Now in this case, let's just say that you didn't get out of the trade and you held it. As we can see, the stock price did rally back between the long call and long put strike. And as we can see, the iron condor lost all of its profits and then eventually expired worthless at expiration. Now that's because with the stock price in between the long call and long put strike, all of those options in the iron condor expired worthless, which means the entire debit that we paid, or the $11.65, is completely gone. So if you bought this iron condor for $11.65 and held it to expiration, you would have lost $1,165 per long iron condor. So this just demonstrates that if you buy an iron condor and the stock price is in between your long strikes at expiration, the iron condor will expire worthless and you'll lose the debit that you paid. All right, so let's sum it all up with the main concepts from this video. So first and foremost, buying iron condors is a directionally neutral strategy that consists of buying an out-of-the-money call spread and put spread on a stock in the same expiration cycle. Now, it's technically directionally neutral because you don't care which direction the stock goes, you just need a big move in either direction. Now, the main profit drivers when buying iron condors are large movements in the stock price in either direction or increases in implied volatility. Now, if the stock price remains between the long strikes and neither of those things happen, you will lose money over time from time decay. Now, as we discussed before, you can close a long iron condor before expiration by simply buying back the short options and selling out the long options in one transaction. Now, doing so will lock in any profits or losses that you have at the time. Now, though a long iron condor begins directionally neutral, the trade will become directional if the stock price trends in one direction, and that's exactly what you want to happen. Now lastly, a long iron condor will typically have a profit potential that's greater than the loss potential, resulting in a lower than 50% probability of profit. Now there are some instances in which the profit potential will be less than the loss potential, in which case the probability of profit will be greater than 50% in theory. Thank you so much for watching this video everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on that circle on the left hand side. And if you want to check out some more options trading strategies, go ahead and click on the playlist link on the right side.